Hey everybody, I said I was thinking about doing a video on showing you how to make a uh, tapered shank for corn cob pipe on your cob mod, which seems to be popular with quite a few, um, or I guess popular cob modders that sell their cobs. And they actually go for quite a bit. And usually my con you know, my thing on them is why well, they're neat um, looking mods. The problem is they're price wise for me, like I said, I, for me, they just seem like for a basic mod like that without anything else it just seems a little bit on the high side and uh, I think there's a lot of people don't have lathes and or the equipment to do it and like I said I'll explain how to do it and you don't need any of that fancy stuff now what I will say is I'm going to assume at some point you have some kind of tools and um, for this project you're either going to need a drill press or a drill um, I mean you're going to have to have some kind of tool to do anything as far as cob modding otherwise you know you just can't go poof and it's done right so here is one i worked out earlier and the lighting out here isn't the best but it's kind of that tampered uh shank i know i said uh stem a lot and when i'm talking about cobs i always get it mixed mixed up but what i was talking about was the shank actually so there's one of those tampered shanks and i just have it in a generic uh cob and really to do this, and if you have watched any other videos about how to make uh, stems, you already know what I'm going to tell you to do, <laughs> right? But on this one, you're going to need an extra tool. And the only tools you are going to need are, I use a 7 8th, seven eighth <laughs> inch um, hole saw from Ace Hardware. And uh, this high-end specialty tool here. <laughs> <laughs> quarter inch uh, bolt one with a round pan head with the Phillips head and a wing nut and that is all you really need now with uh, the drill if you don't have a drill press and you're going to be using a drill I would say you're pretty much limited to uh, making your the shank length about as far as you can go in this hole saw reasoning being is because if you have to, if you want to make it longer, and you flip the piece of wood around to catch it on the other side, um, chances are you might be off with your your hand drill or your, your regular corded drill. But on drill press, you can kind of get away with that. But the beauty of these is usually they're more of a stubby shank anyway, so it should be okay. Um, the reason why I say it's a pretty basic mod, it's actually a great place for someone to start if they're gonna want to get into making shanks because this is one of the simpler ones to make it's actually one of the simplest mainly because we're, we're making a taper and then we're not up here where the the stem actually comes into the shank we're not concerning ourselves with it being flush or any of that there's just there always is this kind of um almost like a freehand style kind of fit to it so we don't have to concern ourselves with any kind of ferrule or any kind of smooth transition so that helps out a lot and we don't have to cons um, concern ourselves with making a uniformed shank at the same diameter all the way and then you know like I said then smooth lining up with the, the stem so this is why this one's fairly easy and basically all you're gonna need is you're gonna get your piece of wood and you're <laughs> if you're using a regular drill I would suggest a quarter drill um, because you're gonna need something that's gonna need quite a bit of torque, but you know with nowadays cordless drills going to lithium and such you might you, cordless one might be fine. So if you have a way to secure the wood um, And you're just gonna drill it out What you're gonna end up with is a plug <laughs> And it's gonna look something like this And there's gonna be a hole right in the middle the reason I choose to do my shanks this way because it does two things. It gives me the hole already and it gives me uh, the round shank. And so it does, does two things at once. And I don't have to come up with any fancy jigs or anything to try to drill holes in the center of dowels. Which um, you can do, but this is just easier. You're doing two things at one time. And then you're not limited to kind of... Uh, if you're doing it with dowels and you're trying to drill holes in the center of them, you'd be kind of limited to whatever dowel stock you've got. This way you can find any scrap piece of wood. Um, in all reality, you only need a piece, you know, about Yogi big, and, uh, you know, so square it off. That's not a big piece of wood. And uh, I've explained it before in one of my other cob basic cob modding videos on how to make these shanks. 
But uh, to kind of put a synopsis on that, you're going to want to go the end grain down. Why? Because you don't need as thick a piece of wood and because the, uh, the grain orientation, when you sand it, it's going to be a lot smoother because you're getting your end grain still staying on the end and you get your edge and side base grains are still running in the same place. So it'll smooth out a lot better. Um, if you were to not go on the end of the grain and you were actually go through the base grain, you'd get some real funky uh, grain patterns, but it'd be a lot harder to get a smooth finish and your glue up is, you know, you're finding something, you know, about this thick or thicker to make a shank is going to be kind of hard without doing a glue up. So, um, Then this tool comes into play, and this is pretty much the key to the whole operation for a tampered shank. Now this high-end specialty tool, which I'll make and sell to you for $75. <laughs> you can go down Ace Hardware and I think maybe for $1.75, two bucks, you can get all the washer, the bolt, and the wing nut. Now this is a quarter inch uh, nut, or bolt I should say. And um, that hole saw leaves about a quarter inch hole-ish, which it might be a slightly larger than the stock uh, uh, Missouri Meerschaum stem hole, but it's not really that much larger. It's, it's fairly close. So what we're going to do is we're going to go put that in there, washer, put it on the top, and then you guys can watch me put this one nut down. Um, so basically what you're making here, if you, if you haven't caught on yet, is you're making a mandrel pretty much for it. And now you can chuck this up in your drill press or your drill. Um, drill press obviously is going to make this whole operation easier because you have two hands free. But if you have a, a clamp or if you had a bench vise, which you secured the wood with, you can also kind of secure your, your drill in there too and use both hands. And now all you have to do is, um, the other thing I would suggest is maybe have a little electrical tape, a couple rounds of electrical tape around the top of the threads, simply because uh, it'll help protect the threads when the, the jaws or the chuck come down. So it does, makes it easier to get these back off. Um, and I went with this kind of this pan head kind of Phillips head sander because actually this head size right here is the almost exact same size um, that goes into the Missouri Meerschaum uh, hole that you're, you're left with here. And that's just kind of showing you how clean that is when you use the microwave method to take those uh, stems out. But yeah, that is about the size of that hole. So put it in your drill. About, um, I'd say I start out usually with 80 grit sandpaper on something like this and you're gonna want to focus mostly on this end here and want, like I said once you get close to that circumference you know you're getting about to where you need to be but you got to make sure you kind of fan it all in too so it doesn't look kind of odd and that's not going to take you that long um, and once you got it done you do, you do that you'll end up with something like this this is one I made earlier out of mahogany now it does, you're going to have a little more straighter here and then the taper start because this is going to be the section that goes into the cop. And um, so you're left with a shape like that. Now for the, I just stole a, a bit or a stem if you want to call it off of one of my uh, Dagner cobs. Kind of for purpose of showing you guys. Or you can do whatever a prefab stem you got or if you're making your own. Um, how I get this hole bigger is um, I actually use my drill press and um, kind of follow that hole on the top part to widen it out. Um, you might be able to do that with your uh, uh, regular drill, but you kind of got to watch if you won't go left or right. But otherwise, if you have a, a uh, kind of like a round file, or if you have one of those square files and just kind of use it like a pencil sharpener to ream it out, that works really well too. It doesn't take that much longer. So then you just take your cob and your stem and it's kind of to the point where I probably round over this edge a little bit and then all I have left to do is cut my angle on here and then there you go. And that's how you make a tampered shank for a uh, cord and cob pipe. Now, um, you know, there's a reason that I think people do purchase some of these from some of these makers. One, because they just don't want to, don't care to make them. Two, they don't think they can. This is very, very, very basic stuff for gob modding. You know, so I don't know if I throw this up on eBay for 50, 60 bucks. <laughs> um, 
but it's, it's a very basic thing. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take long. I'd say a half hour or less. If you have a drill press, you can probably kick it out in about 15 minutes, you know, from starting to drill the, the shank to make it and then just sanding. Because once you have it on here, you also can keep sanding too. So once you go from your 80 grit, which doesn't take as long as you think to get it down there, you can also, you know, start going to your 120, 220, you know, 3, 380, 4, 6, however high you want to go to get this to shine. But once it's in that drill moving it doesn't take long to do that so like i said less than the time time it takes to watch an episode of happy days you can have that already glued in there and ready for finish so these guys that are actually interesting in cob modding and do you think you need a lathe to make the, that kind of shank absolutely not it's actually like i said it's probably the most basic one to make just because you're not worrying about lining stuff up as much because you're making that cone shape so there you have it um, I could maybe do a more in-depth video if it really you guys are really more interested in it. Um, otherwise, I, I just kind of reference you to my how based how to basic cob mining how to or whatever it was in that series, and look at the video that had the one about making shanks. And um, I think I probably explained using the whole saws more to make um, shanks. And I probably I believe I have the size of the drill bit too that most closely resembles the Missouri Meerschaum stem size if you didn't want to ream it out by hand with a file so there you go <laughs> um, the only other thing to keep in mind too is for the price of some of these these cobs if you were to buy two of them you could already bought a drill press from Harbor Freight um, for the price of one of these cobs that I've seen they're almost $40 shipped to some of these if not more you could people say well I don't have the I don't have the tools and I buy the tools and the stem. For the price almost, if you were to go to like Walmart or big box store and just buy a, a corded drill um, and the whole saw and this fancy jig if you make your own save yourself some money. Um, between the drill, the whole saw, and that bolt, um, you're not really that, <laughs> even if you bought the wood, but you don't need a big piece of wood so you can get scrap from anywhere. Even if you do have to buy it from like Menards, you know, that thinner small stock, that, that'll make a bunch of stems. But my point is, even you add all that cost together, in, it's not that, it's pretty close, if not even just a little bit more than if you would actually bought the cob. So basically what I'm trying to say, I guess, in a roundabout way is, you could actually buy all this stuff on the cheaper end to make this and be pretty close to what it would be to buy it. So... But the plus side is, not only could you make as many of those cobs as you want, you but now you would have a drill, <laughs> you'd have a hole saw, and all that other stuff. So, something to consider. Um, so, yeah. Keep on modding any of you guys. Um, if there's any ever anything else you guys want me to show you how to do, I'd be more than happy to. Like I said, I don't sell cobs, so I don't, I don't have nothing to really worry about anybody finding out. Just some of this stuff isn't... To me, it comes easy, and maybe nobody explained it that way, or nobody showed you how to do it this way. So, now you know, and uh, go out there and make some cow mods.